Alrighty, so working on the Z today. Today's gonna be the first day of uh, doing the head gasket replacement and uh, center head replacement as well. Um, little background information in case you all don't know this car has an overheating problem, and I've discovered that uh, the head gasket is the problem. It's uh, getting uh, combustion gases into the cooling system. So. I ran some Thermacure through it this first uh, before that because uh, there was a lot of rust in the block and I want to get most of that out. I still got that stuff in here so I'm getting ready to drain the radiator. You had to drain the radiator anyway to um, take the head off and all of that just because coolant will get everywhere. So I'm going to pull this crap off just let you know the fluid in here is kind of nasty looking because it's the thermal cure it's supposed to look like this when it's doing its job so actually it looks like I'm missing quite ew yeah that's not good looking that's not good looking at all ew so yeah um, obviously there's a problem uh, and um I'm lost a lot of coolant. What the heck? That's interesting. Let me pull this dipstick out real quick. Mm. Dirty, but it's not milky, so. I don't know. This water just went somewhere. I have no idea. So, um. I know when I pull this, uh. Stuff out to do the coolant test, I had trouble getting the other. The, getting it back in there so it might be just due to the loss of fluid like that but um interesting anyway let me go ahead and pull this pep cock the pep cock off the radiator which is oh it's loose that's probably where everything's come where all my fluid went so yeah just go ahead and uh, pull that off like i said um, I'm not worried about the rips on this stuff because this stuff's biodegradable apparently. It's gonna go ahead and drain it out. And after that, I'm gonna pull this um, upper radiator hose off. That way, there's several holes in there and, and circulate some water through there to uh, flush most of the rest of it out. I'm probably gonna get a milk jug to uh, collect all this. Because uh, apparently, I could use this stuff for. Uh, Storing old tools and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, then I'll be all. Once I pull this hose off, and see if it actually did anything or not. So, yeah, let me uh, wait till this stuff gets uh, drained out and uh, I'll flush the hose through it and uh, I'll come back to you when that's all done because I already did a video on all this. So, yeah. So I'll see y'all in just a minute. Well, it's going to be a second for you, but it's probably going to be a couple minutes for me. <laughs> Movie magic. Alright, so I got everything being flushed out. Um, you can see the water is looking kind of clear. Um, I'm going to let that go for several more minutes. Uh, this is the thermocure I took out of it. It's it turned completely black. That's normal. Um, there's a bit of sediment on the bottom of the drain pan though this I, I didn't clean this drain pan when I started so that may or may not be uh, accurate I don't see the water coming out but it's uh, nice and clear like I said this stuff's biodegradable so I'm not worried about it at least that's what it says on the package as for the clean job it did it actually did a pretty well job uh, the hose ain't perfect but it is a lot better than what it was I might end up uh, changing these hoses out to silicone hoses anyway so I'm not too worried about that do that later on in the future and once I get done with this uh, with this I'll pull the hose out so put the camera down into what the thermostat housing is trying to show you that but, uh, I think it did a very good job at uh, what it's doing I'll uh, be obviously the best way to do it is strip the whole engine down to get hot tank and acid dip that will eat up all that all the rust in it for sure but that's a full rebuild. I'm not doing a full rebuild on this engine. I'm really just changing the top, the, the cylinder head, and the gasket, and a couple of little things. But, um, yeah. I'm not really getting much sediment out. Then again, it's 
kind of hard to bring that, bring that stuff up to the top. But um, we'll let this go for a little bit longer. I said this is the I'm probably going to save because, like I said, I can use that on um, other stuff for um, uh, rust repair. Allegedly, that's what says on the back of the package. But, um, yeah. Um, stick my hand in there. I'm not feeling much of the Joe stuff anymore. Uh, I do see some of it in there though, so it's definitely got some boo boo in there still. So I'm gonna let this run for a little while. Um, and it's going backwards, what it normally does. Normally, the water comes out of the top of the engine and down to the bottom and back into the bottom of the engine. Um, I guess another thing, I could, way I could do it is I could just put the cap back on, shove the hose in here, start it up, and let the water pump kind of circulate it all and have it spray out that way, but uh, I don't want to do that. So, yeah. It's going to be like this for a little while, then after the, I get done with this, I'm going to... Well, push the car back down to where it was and that way I can start stripping it down because I'm not going to do the only reason I have the car here is because it's the most level spot and I'll start pulling the spark plugs out a couple sensors start pulling the fuel rail off you don't have to pull the fuel rail off but I'm going to just for clearance I'll pull the, the uh, start unplugging stuff and I'm going to have to pull this power steering pump off. I'm just going to pull it off and set it to the side. So that's pretty much how that's going to start. Anyway, I'll come back to you guys when I'm getting ready to start stripping uh, this whole stuff down. Or start stripping everything down. I'll see y'all in a couple minutes. Alright, so I got the engine pretty much flushed out as most best as I can with what I have available uh, but I did get most of that goopy stuff out of the top of the radiator um, as for what the thermocurator did to the engine uh, this is aluminum so the rest is not necessarily stick to this stuff but it is I know you can't really see it but it is a lot cleaner than what it was um, if you look at the video where I pulled uh, did a freeze plug replacement on this um, all in this tube had a bunch of rust in it and I haven't pulled it out yet but I'm pretty sure it's probably looking a lot cleaner than what uh, it was so now I'm just gonna go ahead and park this back where it was so I can start stripping it down like I said I'm gonna pull the spark plugs out and pull the injector fan off the, everything off the intake the fuel rail intake itself the exhaust manifold probably gonna undo the cap and rotor so that I don't get damaged pull the radiator and fan out just to make it easier don't necessarily have to but I'm gonna do it to make it easier because I gotta pull this tensioner off I gotta pull the power steering pump off and the bracket and I gotta pull this uh, bypass hose off at least uh, off of right here and that's pretty much it then I gotta pull the valve cover off undo everything inside this inside of there and the head will be able to come off. Um, I'm gonna take my time on it. I'm not really in a rush to get this car going because I've got a perfectly good truck. Perfectly good truck, so I'm not too too worried about it. Plus, I still need the exhaust manifold because um, the head that I bought for this is an M42 head, and it's a square port the exhaust um, square port head where uh, the P79 hits more of a round port head. I guess theoretically if I had a carbide bit I could widen the ports on this exhaust manifold up enough to where it'll fit properly but eh, all that uh, after all that work is just easy to buy even just a cheap eBay square port header. You know it's probably not going to do anything performance wise but um, at least it will fit. Um, but yeah so that's the next step, just pushing this thing down and start disconnecting all these uh, vacuum lines. That'll probably be the easiest thing to do. Then I'll pull the radiator out and the fan. And I'll just throw this stuff all in the back of the car. 
or inside it, inside that little room of my house and put it on the tarp or something like that. I don't know. I have to figure that out when I go. And yeah, that's pretty, pretty much uh, the plan right now. Uh, so basically, in this part of the video, I just want to get all the wires and hoses and stuff stripped down and the cooling system uh, removed. Anyway, uh, see y'all in a minute when I got this thing pushed down, I got all this uh, stuff uh, disconnected. Um, we're also going to, while I have everything all disconnected, I'm going to change these uh, connectors out. The, the rest of the connectors I haven't changed out yet. Like this one right here, this one right here, and, um, one right here, and the one for the AFM. So, yeah. Anyway, and that's enough of me talking. Uh, I'll go ahead and uh, do that. So I'll see y'all in just a second. Alright, so I got pretty much everything pulled off the intake that I need to pull off, except for this little tube down here. I just remembered. <laughs> but, um... Basically, you got a series of bolts on top right here. One, two, three, four bolts on top, and you got like four or five bolts on the bottom. Um, it's kind of weird how they have it set up on here. Of course, these four bolts are just for the intake, but the ones on the bottom hold both the intake and the exhaust manifold on. It's weird. And you had to like get an extension in between these little heat shields on either side. It's a little bit of a pain. Uh, main thing you have to worry about is like the studs on the corner snapping off. Um, uh, good way, good thing to do is to go in a couple days before and spray them down and just keep spraying them down with the penetrating oil. That'll typically get them loosened up. I'm gonna go in, uh, take a little bit of a break because it's hot out here. Uh, of course, the day, the day I decide I want to record is a day that's not cloudy. It's been cloudy all week, but the day I decide I want to do this stuff. Um, yeah. So, anyway. I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, take a break a little bit, come back out. Pull the spark plugs out on that side, pull the radiator out, and I'll be ready to pull this, uh, intake and, uh, exhaust manifold off. And I'll probably call for the day. I'll uh, worry about the cylinder head tomorrow, because I need to get a couple things. I need, uh, some brake cleaner, some razor blades, and, eh. Some oil, some coolant, you know. So, um, yeah. I'm going to see you when I'm ready. Alright, so I got everything on this side off. Got the valve cover off. I got that top dead center. Uh, how do you know this top dead center cylinder one? These things, two uh, cam loads will be up. This is the intake, this is the exhaust, or something like that. I'm sure I think it's the other way around. I think this is the intake, this is. Either way, these will be pointed out kind of like bunny ears. And of course, the mark on the hall rack balancer will reflect it on the, the little timing plate. I got the intake of throttle body off. Um, don't really have to take them both off separately. I just did, just so I have room. Got the exhaust manifold off. Um, these are definitely round ports, as you can tell by these little inserts. Um, they do this. I don't know why they do this, but, um, yeah, so this is definitely a round port head, for sure, and, yep, obviously the other cylinder head don't have these little inserts, I'm not exactly sure why they do these, I think it's just, uh, uh, I have no idea, it is a lot smoother than, let's say, they were trying to do with the aluminum, if, if you look at the intake port. But, uh, yeah, so, that's basically it, um, when taking the, this, uh, manifold off, I did notice that these two bolts on these, on the ends right here, were easy to get to from underneath with the natural, regular wrench, rather than trying to go through the side with the socket. Um, it just seemed easier to me. In the other two, the right here and right here, those were easy to get to just from this way. And of course, these three go over here, and these two on the sides are the ones you really gotta worry about snapping off. But luckily, I got all the bolts out. This one was missing, so I'm assuming there's something wrong with that hole. Um, this is the exhaust gas. You can see a tar right here. It's probably 
where our leak was and whatnot. Uh, yeah. So, I said it's going to do it for today. I decided I don't need to move the radiator because it's really out of the way of everything. Uh, tomorrow, I'm going to pull the head. I got a tool to go in the, here for the time chain to keep, make sure that it don't fall down. And I got, uh, I'll pull the head off and hopefully clean everything up. And yeah, I'm just going to take all the, these uh, parts and throw them in the back or on the passenger seat whatnot. And call it a day. It's hot. Good news is these are the spark old six spark plugs. It's one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six. And they all seem to be burning evenly. Does look like the build uh, cylinder three. Does a little look a little bit cleaner than the other one, so I think that that's the problem cylinder. Anyway, um Yeah. So I'm gonna go put get everything will put up. And um, call it a day. I'll see you guys tomorrow when I pull the cylinder head off. Alright, so it's still day one. I'm going to put this at the end of the, of the last uh, clip. Uh, basically, cool, it cooled down a little bit. And, um, you know, I kind of got that, I want to get this done feeling. At least get the cylinder head off, or at least loosened up to where I can take it off tomorrow. Um... Basically, the biggest thing is just trying to get this crank bolt loose. Uh, it get, does get torqued like 106 foot pounds. And you also got to stick a thing down in the, in the timing chain area to uh, keep the tensioner from uh, closing up on you. Because when you close it up, you have to take the whole front dress off and all of that. And I really don't feel like doing that. They do sell a tool. Uh, that's part number to it. But they do sell a tool that you stick down in there. And it basically presses up against the two uh, guides and uh, two chain guides and uh, the tensioner to keep it from closing up on you. Um, so I'm gonna try to bust this nut loose. I got my impact. It's got a chrome socket on it, I know, but um, I don't have an impact socket that's this size. This is a 19 mil. Yeah, my set goes from 17 mil to 21 for some reason, so I don't even have an 18 mil. And of course, it's got your uh, head bolts that goes all the way down there. I believe it's 10, five on each side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, maybe 14. I don't know. They, it's got a handful of bolts. Um, passenger side of the engine is the short, short side for bolts, and the driver side is the long side for bolts. And um, but I'll get to deal with that when I get ready to put the new head on. So I'm going to try to get this bolt loose. Like I said, you want to make sure the engine's at top dead center. Or it's close enough. Since I'm taking it off, I can do it close enough. And um, deal with it later. This uh, uh, cam socket's only keyed on one way. So, you know, that'll kind of help you out. Use these two little ears on the camshaft to help you stick a wrench on there to hold it still. But like I said, I'm going to try to bust it off with the... My impact, I don't think it's going to be strong enough, but we can try. Worst case scenario, we take a, an adjustable wrench, put it on here, make sure it's on here, not on the lobe. And um, support it and get a long breaker bar and um, bust it off that way. And uh, at least want to get it loose, then I'll stick the tool down in there. The, um, the cam chain tool down in there to make sure that's all good and then I'll take the bolt off the rest of the way and kind of like hopefully it comes out relatively easy anyway let me go ahead and get that done and um get back to you once it's all ready all right so I had to use the breaker bar on it because uh my impact wouldn't fit in here and it was on there pretty tight so as you can see it was relatively easy now now I'm going to take this tool, make sure you put it in that way, I'll also tie the string on it to where I can remove it later on, and I'm just going to sit it down in here, like so, kind of push it down a little bit as well, like that, and that will pretty much, 
It's just sitting like that. And I'll pretty much, uh, that'll hold uh, everything in there. So now, just gotta get my ratchet and spin this off the rest of the way. And lay it down to the side. So let me go ahead and do that. Then, uh, good thing I got my breaker bar out anyway because I'm gonna need that on the bolt, head bolts. Those, th even though these are nowhere near as tight as that. Like I said, that gets tightened down to like 100 foot pounds. These only go up to like 60 at the most. Anyway, so let me go ahead and uh, get everything loosened up and I'll. I'll be definitely it for tonight because I had to get the other head cleaned up and everything. I got to figure out. I got to take this cam now because I'm deci I decided I'm going to use this camshaft rather than the one that comes on the other cylinder head. And um, yeah, so enough uh, talking around. Let me go ahead and get this put taken all apart before I lose too much light. Anyway, so see y'all in just a second. All right, so it did come off come off relatively easily. I took off the bolt and I was able to wiggle it out and I didn't and uh, got the guide tool stayed in there pretty nicely moved a little bit on me but it should, nothing too uh, serious so anyway I want to start busting these with bolts loose these are 10 millimeter uh, allen heads as you can see and basically what you want to do is uh want to go from the outside in so I'm a Start with this one, I'm gonna move to this one, then go to the back, and do the back tool too, then go back to the, and work away like that all the way to the middle. So, um, yeah, then when you tighten it down, when you go to tighten down, which I will uh, explain more later when I go put the new head on, you want to do from inside out. There is a technically a specific torque sequence, but basically, as long as you do that. It'll help prevent the head from getting warped. Also, there's two little, like, 10 millimeter bolts on the front corners that you gotta take off too, so don't forget about those. I almost did. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so I'm gonna go get those off then. I'm gonna do the main bolt, main head bolts, and that's it. Then, uh, I'll pull the head off. Then I'll definitely be it for today, because, uh, like I said, I gotta get the other head and everything, uh, clean and prepped to, uh, Go on, I got to prep the, clean up the block surface too. Anyway, um, see when I got the head pretty much loose, ready to come off. Alright, so I got all the head bolts cracked loose as you can see. Uh, I just have them sitting in there because I don't want to mix them up. Even though, like I said, the long bolts go, all the ones that go into the cam towers and the short bolts go directly onto the head. It's kind of weird how they did it that way, but I guess it makes sense My since there's a fastener there anyway. The security head must be used to secure the cam, cam towers as well. Instead of just a little, uh, to 10, 13 millimeter bolts that are on there as well. Anyway, so now I'm gonna start prying. Oh wow, that's loose already. I could literally just pull this up. Which I'm gonna have to do off camera because, you know, this head, it's not that heavy. This one head... This one big aluminum head is lighter than one of the other heads on my uh, truck, which are cast iron. So this one big six-cylinder cylinder head is lighter than one side, well, well, one cylinder bank, which is four cylinders on the V8, which is pretty mind-blowing, honestly. But it is kind of an awkward angle. It is kind of deep into the engine bay, and I got a whole side of a car that's kind of blocking me so I have to be careful not to like hurt myself or the head or the radiator or whatnot but um like I said I'll do that off camera I'm just those surprise is not that not that stuck in on there a lot of times when you take cylinder heads off you gotta like beat them up a little bit to get them off um if it is stuck uh, there is a surface right here. If I get like a rubber mallet and it's, it's tap underneath here, I also use this part right here with the, with the pry bar. Just be gentle, not to hurt any of the two surfaces. What you want to try to avoid is avoid sticking like the say the brake bar into the port, well, for like the exhaust or even the intake, and start yanking on it because you don't want to damage that surface, especially if you're trying to save the head. 
But anyway, let me go ahead and get the cylinder head off, and like I said, I'll call that at night, pull my tools away for, for the day, and I'll get the other, uh, all the head prepped and ready to go uh, tomorrow. I won't be able to get it running because I need to get an exhaust manifold, but at least I'll um, have it all, the engine and everything all closed up. Anyway, uh, enough of me talking, let me go ahead and get going. So I'll see you in just a minute after I get this uh, engine or uh, cylinder head off the engine. So the plot thickens, so I got the cylinder head off as, as you can see, but this is a newer Phil Pro gasket. The same gasket I just bought for reassembling this uh, engine. So this engine's been apart before, which leads me to think this has been rebuilt, because these pistons also look like flat uh, dish pistons instead of the flat top pistons that are supposed to be in here. So I'm 99% sure this is supposed to be an F54 block, which is interesting, because uh, if that's the case with that uh, P79 cylinder head, um, this thing probably had like 7.4 to 1 compression, now with that N42 it's probably going to be like 9.2 to 1, still a lot better, but I guess theoretically it'll be able to run just regular, bull uh, regular gas, I don't have to worry about uh, Anything like that. I was a little bit off on the top dead center thing. So hopefully I'll be able to re uh, correct that. Um, yeah. But uh, no big deal on that. Um, like I said, on the passenger side of the engine, it did say F54 somewhere on it. I forget where. So. I'm going to reassure that, make sure that I'm, I'm looking at the right engine. But uh, that is very, very interesting. Haven't looked at the cylinder head yet, just threw it up on the trash can for now, just because it's out of the way. But um, interesting, interesting indeed. Uh, when I get done today, I'm just going to put place a like, trash, trash bag over the top of the engine, so if it does rain tonight, because that uh, hole in the hood and of course the vents it's not going to get uh, too wet probably also dry out these cylinders get the water out of there but um cylinders look pretty good because so like I said I think this engine has been rebuilt before which kind of does make sense but it doesn't make it uh, makes me wonder why there's so much rust scale in it which there is still some you can see in that port right there there is still some Quite a bit, but uh, eh, hopefully, be a lot better than it was. Cause I don't think the rust scale was the problem this engine had. I'm gonna try to tip it over this way, I guess. I'm leaking oil all over my trash can, and yeah, the, these uh, chambers are definitely a lot bigger than the one that's on the other cylinder head. I don't really see anything wrong other than that I don't think the gasket really seated up against the cylinder head properly. I don't know, it's interesting. But like I said, this head gasket is relatively new on in here. Like, get it off of everything and... I'm looking at it. Right there, the suspect. But well, that could have been. See how this is wet and all the other ones are dry. So that's the suspect. And if the cylinder pressure from here is getting into, uh, I think this slot right here, that, or uh, any of the, these two holes right here, that will probably uh, cause it. They're gonna take these oil galleys. I think the, this is the. I don't know. I'm not exactly sure how this head uh, works, but right here is definitely a cooling hole. I believe so, so you know. I don't want to see where a failure were, it was, but like I said, this is a new newer gasket, so I'm wondering if it's just assembly error that was causing the overheat problem. So, interesting, very interesting.
anyway, uh, that's definitely going to be the end of today's video. Uh, tomorrow, like I said, I'm going to prep everything, get everything cleaned up enough, and, uh, yeah. See if I could get this thing closer to the top of the center. Hopefully I could just hold this, uh, uh, thing in and turn the engine a little bit one way or the other. Because it's close, but it is off, and that's not right. Now, let me figure out what exactly the block this is and see if these are the right pistons are in here. That's supposed to be in here, because I don't think so. These look like dish pistons rather than flat top pistons, so. Very interesting indeed. Anyway, talk to y'all later. See y'all in the next video. Alrighty, after a further uh, examination, <laughs> I've discovered a little hard to see. It is, in fact, an N42 block, not an F54. I don't know where I got F54 from, but that explains why it's got the dish pistons. So, this thing it literally had like 7.8 to 1 uh, compression or whatever, 7.4, 7.8 to 1 compression. So this head is still going to provide a lot of uh, uh, a big compression bump, but it's only going to be like 9.4 to 1. Which is still fine, that's still plenty, and I'll be able to run regular gas, and won't have to worry about the detonation or anything like that, fortunately. But, um, very interesting. Very, very interesting. I wanted this box and swap, this engine just swapped in here before. So, as far as I know, that M42 block stopped, and, uh, the 70s, like mid 70s, and they went to the. Uh, I'm not sure. I wanted to. I, I wanted to look that up, but uh. Yep. So that explains it. This is not an F54 block. It's an M42 block. And it's gonna get an M42 cylinder head, so it's gonna be like a matching set. But um, like I said that's gonna be it for the video. Um, I think I already said all the other stuff and stuff earlier. Uh, follow me on my Instagram, put the username in the description, and uh, be safe, have fun, uh, stay tuned for more, more videos, next video is going to be me uh, putting this whole mess back together, so see you then.